as ERP trends for 2023 and beyond? Let me maybe start. So um, this is, um, I mean, the, the move, the first big trend is the ongoing and accelerated adoption of the cloud. I mean, we touched on the different aspects and the different flavors, yeah? but the cloud is there. And uh, if you look uh, at SAP, where we are growing, we're growing the cloud. If you look at our competition, unfortunately, they're growing there as well. But I think this is really uh, saying that the market is, and our, all our customers and, and uh, companies out there, they're going towards the cloud. So this is, I mean, is, is this a trend? I don't know. This is just like, it's the fact. It's now. It's there. It's. It's not anymore a trend. It's clearly uh, a, a table stake. I would say, right? So that's that's. I think very important. Uh, on the other side, what we also see, and I mean, there are many things, but um, just to focus on some, I think uh, what is uh, very important are sustainable operations. For example, they yeah, have to protect uh, the environment. So, and here uh, I think SAP is very much leading. So, uh, on one side, you have. I mean, we all know what are the costs of a product. Yeah, you have labor, you have resources, and so on. Now, what is coming is basically also the damage you are doing or you are causing with that to to the environment. So these are also certain costs. Yeah, and um, and uh, so let's say the financial implications and the environmental implications are somehow similar. I mean, don't quote me on that, but somehow th there is a certain cost. There is a certain footprint of or carbon footprint, which is let's say a problem. And, and therefore, uh, SAP is, is, is very early in that, in that game, and uh, we um, are able really to um, to bring this into the, the product, yeah, and uh, we call it the green ledger, and with that, the companies have basically, when running their financials, they have also the... Um, I the saw that. I talked to Janet about that, that does controlling. I don't know if you know her. She wrote a book about controlling. Yes, She's yes, talked yes, about it. Salmon. Yeah. As she was telling me, I was like, oh my gosh, we're going to know the green thing on every product. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to. Yes. <laughs> but then I thought, if they put that number on there, will companies be taxed on it? I don't know. But maybe uh, at the end, uh, as, an, um, as a consumer, uh, if you oh, want, consumers or, uh, let's let's think this through. As a consumer, you want to uh, print out like, okay, uh, in, in this product you're buying uh, the the costs, uh, or the environmental costs are this or that. Then and yeah. the, for a similar one are lower. Then you might rethink it. I mean, it's not that we have it right now, but I mean, this is. Uh, it could be this. like consumer taxed on it on the number it comes up and says. I mean, oh, yeah. you never know. It's all kind of crazy <laughs> that whole, you know. But you've got to be a company that's able to, you know, swing, pivot, move, and get with the rest of them. If that does happen, you'll be, you know. Yeah, and I think then uh, when when you're exposing something to consumers or to to, to tax authorities, this number has to be uh, has to be valid. Yeah, therefore yes. uh, we we treat this this data the same way like financial data. Yeah, and there and I think this is, I mean, we have that in our product, but it's definitely an trend it's an obligation and uh, i think this will continue and, and will accelerate also towards um, uh, really being clear on, on what our, our sustainable uh, operations are yeah but maybe marcus you want to spend something about like other trends like uh, hyper automation or or ai for example, yeah. so, so for example yeah so um, I, I would agree also to the trends what, what i might just outlined but um, other things like hyper automation yeah it's, it's a good thing maybe alba yeah? so um, because um, what we're seeing is um, that um, we have um, technologies out there like artificial intelligence and, and, and machine learning um, out there since a while. Um, yeah. they, they are not new. What, what's new now is that they are more and more adopted and um, that they are becoming more and more mature. You know? So that's, that's, I would say, the difference, a kind of turning point um, and we as SAP invest a lot in those uh, technologies in, in a way that we always, you know, we are a business process company, I would say. We're also always looking in from this angle. So how can these technologies help um, in the end our customers, our end users um, to become more effective, more more efficient in, in their daily work that they have to do? 
And I think the beauty of this um, technologies is that, um, I mean, automation is not a new thing. It was uh, potentially the target of, of, of um, ERP systems since they were invented. So to be um, more automated. Um, but um, what's, what's new there is that with these hyper automation technologies like machine learning, yeah. Um, the system can identify new patterns themselves you know, and, and then um, apply it. The problem with this is not the technology, I would say. It's, it's a little bit gaining trust on, um, on the humans who are using these technologies because um, they, they um, need to trust um, these technologies so that they are doing at least the same good way, well, way of work they, the, the users would do um, themselves. And um, hopefully even better. Yeah? And, and that's, I think uh, that's I think that's because a lot of users have not trusted the data that they got because systems in the past were all over the place, various systems, and they were like, "If I get this information, is it really right? You know, how do you validate it?" But with S four, I mean, you're like, "Yeah, it is right," and you can actually prove it, and they can follow the, you know, like you said. And I think. Once users understand that, I think they'll be a lot more adapting to other things happening. Exactly. And, and this is also a good other point you're saying, knowledge is all over the place. That's that's also a little bit another trend I would uh, see from my point of view. Um, Gardner would, would call it the composable ERP system. So that's the term they are using. And um, you can think a bit about um, that there is a core um, ERP functionality that um, everybody's using. And then there are different um, other parts which some customers will use, others not. But in the end, um, everything needs to fit um, together. And, and for a customer and the end user, um, they shouldn't care about where this um, particular piece of software is running. It just, it just has to work. And this is what, what composable ERP is all about, to be hmm. more flexible in, in the different components you're using and sticking those together. Yeah? So this is also another trend I would see. Mm -hmm. That's 